Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to So Custom. Today's video, as you will have already seen from the thumbnail, is how I sewed up this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is 100% cotton chambray fabric. Little bit of structure with it and good for a project like this. And on to the cutting out. This is my front. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a pleat in the front of this one, a little notch to indicate where that is on the neck. So that's my front cut out and notched. Now to stay the neckline. So I'm just running a tiny little stitch from one shoulder around the neck and up to the other shoulder. And this is just going to somewhat prevent the fabric from stretching out too much while I'm working on it. Back stitching to start and to finish. So that's that done. And I'll give that a little bit of a press off camera, which you can see I've done here. So now on to that pleat. So I'm just going to fold one side of the fabric over the other, lining up those notches you see me snip, and pinning. And now to sew down from that notch, just about an inch and a half or so, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So I just need to press that pleat open. So just flattening out that little bit of fabric, making sure it's lined up with that stitch line, pressing, and then run a tacking stitch just over the top there, just to hold everything in place. So back stitching to start and to finish within my seam allowance. And that's how that looks. So that's my neckline all stayed and my pleat in. So now to work on the hem. So I'm giving myself a double folded hem here. So just folding the hem up by about half of my allowance, pressing, folding again and pressing. And once it's all done, this is how it looks. And now to stitch. So I'm stitching right along that inner crease edge using a little bit of a longer stitch length. Back stitching to start. Trying to stick to that inner crease the whole way around. And back stitching to finish. So happy with that and after it's had a nice press this is how it looks nice and neat and tidy so now that that's done I'm ready to work on the yoke so I've cut myself a piece of fabric that is somewhat square I'm just pressing it along the bias in preparation for sewing my pin tucks selecting my stitch increasing my tension and ready to sew. So I've just lined up the centre of my foot with that bias line and what the machine is doing here is taking four stitches just to the inside of the crease and then coming to the outside of the crease and back in through again and stitching on the bias coupled with that increased tension pulls that fabric in creating this gorgeous scallop detail. So that's my first line sewn. So now I need to repeat that process many times. So to do that, I'm just folding the fabric about an inch away from that first scallop edge. Pressing. Giving myself a nice crease edge there. Ready to sew my second line. Lining that crease up with the centre of my foot, trying to maintain that position the whole way down, taking it nice and easy 
and that's my second line done. So now I'm just going to repeat that whole process until I have enough scalloped pin tucks to cut out my yoke piece, which is what I have here. So I'm just laying my pattern piece on top of those pin tucks, making sure my centre front there is lined up with the edge of the fabric, pinning into place and cutting out. And this is what I get. So that's one side of my yoke. So for the second side, I want to make sure that my pin tucks match up. So I'm laying my cut piece over my fresh fabric underneath, lining up my pin tucks, pinning into place and cutting out. And this is what I get. So I'm super happy with this. So now for the placket. So I have two layers of fabric underneath this pattern piece. I'm just folding it in half along its length, pressing, giving myself a nice crease line there to line up my interfacing with. I'm using a press-on cotton interfacing, which is nice and lightweight, but will also provide just enough structure to support the buttons and buttonholes. So that's that done. So now I just want to fold in that bottom edge by my one centimeter seam allowance and press. That will just help me out later on. And of course I've done that whole process twice. So now to add my placket to my yoke. So I'm just lining up the unpressed seam alliance to the wrong side of the yoke and pinning. And ready to stitch. At my one centimeter seam alliance, back stitching to start and backstitching to finish. So that's that done. So now to press. So I'm just pressing my placket away from my yoke, making sure that that seam alliance in underneath is butted up against the placket and then laying that crease edge on top of my stitch line and pressing. And I just want to run a stitch line right along that crease edge. So back stitching to start, using a little bit of a longer stitch length, trying to make sure that my needle's as close to that crease edge as I can get it. And back stitching to finish. So that's how that looks. And of course I do exactly the same thing to the other side. And after they've had a good press, this is how they look. So now to join my placket together at that bottom edge. So just laying one over the other, pinning into place and ready to stitch. Sewing within my seam allowance, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So that's that done. So that's my pin tucks and placket all complete. So now I'm ready to join my entire yoke with the neckline of my blouse. So laying my yoke over my neckline, my fabric is right sides together and pinning the center and ready to stitch from there up to the shoulder on both sides. So back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance making tiny little adjustments the whole way round, trying to make sure that my edges are lined up, taking it nice and easy here, and back stitching to finish. So that's one side done. And of course I do exactly the same on the other. And off camera, I've just finished off my edge on the overlocker. And in preparation for understitching, I've pressed that seam towards the bodice. And now on to the understitching. And I'm sewing here, through the bodice, through that seam alliance in underneath, and I'm about a millimetre or two away from the yoke. Back stitching to start, using a little bit of a longer stitch length, and back stitching to finish. So that's how that looks. And I'll give that a press off camera, and this is the result. So that's my front assembled and ready to be joined to the back 
at the shoulder seams. So on to the back. I have one layer of fabric on the fold underneath this pattern piece, a notch at the centre back neck. So that's that done. And off camera I've just finished off my hem there in exactly the same way as I did the front. And now this piece is ready to be joined to the front at the shoulder seams. So just laying my back over my front, my fabric is right sides together, pinning and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start, at my 1cm seam allowance and back stitching to finish. So I'll finish that edge on the overlocker and give those seams a bit of a press which you can see here and now that that's done I'm ready for the collar. So I have two layers of folded fabric underneath this pattern piece, a little notch at the top and bottom of the fold line in the centre and one at the shoulder. So that's my two collar pieces all cut out and off camera I've added that seam interfacing and like I did on the placket before, I've pressed up my seam allowance on one side. So now to join these two pieces together, lining up my notches, pinning and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my 1cm seam allowance, a few little pivots there around my curve, taking it nice and easy here. and finishing with a back stitch. So now I just need to trim that seam alliance down and give it a bit of a press. So I'm using pinking shears this time and I'm taking away probably about two thirds of that seam alliance. I've then pressed that seam towards the right and here under stitching through the collar, through that pressed and trimmed seam underneath back stitching to start, using a little bit of a longer stitch length and back stitching to finish. And once it's had a nice press, this is how it looks. So happy with that. So now this piece is ready to be joined to the neck of my blouse. So my bodice is wrong side out lining up my notches, lining up my shoulder seams and pinning and stitching here at my 1cm seam allowance, back stitching to start, making tiny little adjustments the whole way around and back stitching to finish. So just like before, I need to trim down that seam and give it a press, which you can see I've done here. And now I'm just lining up that crease over the top of the line of stitches you've just seen me sew, and ready to stitch. Starting at the centre, using that same longer stitch length. Taking it nice and easy here. And back stitching to finish. And of course I do the same on the other side. It's had a good press and this is how it looks. So happy with that. So now that my collar's on, I'm ready to close up my side seams. So laying my front over my back, right sides together and pinning and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my 1cm seam allowance and back stitching to finish. And off camera, I'll tidy up that edge and give it a press which you can see I've done here. So now just to finish off the sleeves. 
So the first thing to do is cut out my little tabs. I have two layers of folded fabric underneath this pattern piece. I've popped a little bit of that interfacing just on one side at the top. That will support my buttonholes. Pinning up my raw edges and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start. Little pivot there at my point. Another little pivot. And back stitching to finish. And I've trimmed those corners, turned my little tabs right side out and given them a good press. And this is how they look. And here, just lining up the centre of the tab with the shoulder, my bodice is wrong side out, pinning, ready to tack into place. So stitching within my seam allowance, back stitching to start, and back stitching to finish. So that's my tabs all stitched and positioned. So now for the cuffs. So I have four layers of fabric underneath this pattern piece two for each sleeve and here I'm just laying one over the other right sides together and pinning along that bottom edge and ready to stitch back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance and back stitching to finish and now I just need to press that seam open So now that that's done, I can join these two short ends together. So laying one over the other, pinning and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance. A little pivot there just at the center and back stitching to finish. And off camera, I'll trim down that seam allowance, turn the whole thing right side out and give it a press. And this is how it looks. So that's my cuffs complete and ready to be added to my blouse. So I'm just lining up the raw edges of my cuff with my sleeve edge. My bodice is wrong side out and pinning into place and ready to stitch my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. And off camera I'll finish off that edge, press it towards the bodice, which you can see here, and now to understitch. So just like I did around the yoke before, I'm stitching through the bodice, through that seam allowance in underneath just about a millimetre or two away from my cuff using a little bit of a longer stitch length back stitching to start and back stitching to finish and this under stitching is just going to help that seam to lie nice and flat and remain tucked away underneath so I've given that bottom cuff a press already the top one I'm just turning right side out I'll press that off camera and this is how it looks, so super happy with these. And now I just have one more thing to do, and that is to add buttons and buttonholes. So I'm using these little brass buttons that I've salvaged from another garment, and I'm just measuring up there from the bottom of the yoke, two and a half inch intervals. Popping in a pin as a marker, and ready to stitch my buttonholes. So stitching here in the usual way. So that's my first buttonhole complete and I'll finish the others off camera and this is how they look. So happy with that. So now just to open those buttonholes up. So popping a pin at the bottom using my seam ripper so the pin here will stop the seam ripper from going right through my fabric 
getting a little bit of fray check. And I've repeated that for all of my buttonholes. And here I've just pinned one placket over the other, pinned my cuff tabs, and I'm just going right through the centre of each of those buttonholes and marking where my button should be. I've stitched those buttons on off camera and with that this little top is complete. So I've got my tabs, my cuffs, my buttons all in place around the sleeve, those beautiful scalloped edge pin tucks, that pleat down the centre front, that lovely double folded hem at the bottom, and this is what it looks like on. So I'm super happy with how this has turned out. Those pin tucks are so nice, really simple to do, and they add a little bit of something extra to your basic top like this. And if you've been following along on Instagram, I trialled out this pattern on a linen and these tucks worked perfectly on that fabric. I love the high-low hem, the little pleat in the front, the stand collar and those cuffs. So I definitely think I'll be making a few more of these. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do, and I shall see you on Friday. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye, folks!